Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how the ramp FTP test works in Zwift. If you're not familiar with FTP, I'll explain more at the end of the video, but in a nutshell it stands for Functional Threshold Power and it's a way to benchmark your fitness on the bike. A good way to explain it is that it's similar to a miles runner time. Zwift has a few different FTP test options. The FTP test and shorter FTP test are both based on sustaining a 20 minute effort just above your FTP. These tests both have a decent warm up before the 20 minute test. The results are very dependent on how well you pace that 20 minute effort. I prefer to use the ramp test because it is more reliable since it takes pacing out of the equation. I also find it less painful than the 20 minute test because you'll spend less time above FTP. The ramp test light is the same test but meant for lighter riders or riders who estimate their FTP to be below about 150 watts. The maximum FTP the ramp test light will give you is about 187 watts. The ramp test is going to work best with a smart trainer because the trainer is going to be able to hold at each of the power levels in the ramp test and you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. This test is going to have three sections, uh, warm up, the actual ramp test, and then lastly a cool down. But before I start the test, I made sure to inflate my rear tire to 100 PSI, I warmed up my smart trainer, and then I calibrated my smart trainer using the spin down option on the Zwift pairing screen. I do this same routine before all my FTP tests just to ensure consistency from test to test. When I load the workout, you can see the structure there on the left side of the screen. You also see the test talking to me throughout the effort in the middle of the screen. And I really like that feature in Zwift. The test is gonna start out with a five minute free ride warm up. In my opinion, this is a little bit short, but I already spent 10 minutes warming up the trainer before even starting the test today. The other FTP tests have good priming efforts in the warm up section before getting to the actual test. Uh, during this five minute portion, I'm just gonna do a few priming efforts of my own, spinning up to 95, 105, and then finally 110 RPM with some short breaks in between. In the top center of the screen, you could see my power, cadence, and heart rate. Now the RAM test begins at a very comfortable 100 watts. My smart trainer is gonna be doing the hard work of holding me at the exact power level of each step in the ramp. This is called ERG mode, and as long as I'm turning the pedals, it will keep me at that wattage. I'm gonna be focusing on a smooth cadence of around 90 RPM for as long as I can hold it. You'll notice my cadence will vary and then drop as I get to the harder wattages. I'm also going to be focusing on controlled breathing and watching my heart rate. For reference, my max heart rate is a little bit above 200 beats per minute, so when I start to hit 190, it'll be a pretty intense effort. This is a good place to talk about how the RAM test works. As you can see, we started at 100 watts and Zwift is increasing the wattage by 20 watts every 60 seconds. It's gonna keep doing this until I stop pedaling. The average wattage that is displayed is the average of my last one minute of power. When I finally reach the point where I'm tapped out and just can't spin the pedals anymore, Zwift is gonna take that last one minute average power and multiply by 75% and calculate my FTP. It's been about six months since my last FTP test and four of those months saw very little riding on my part. Uh, I've spent the last two months trying to get back on the bike with a little bit of training, but mostly casual riding. And it feels like I'm back up around my peak shape of about six months ago, so I'm estimating my FTP to be around 230 watts. Working the 75% of one minute power calculation backwards, that means I should expect to be tapped out either in the 300 or 320 watts step. Okay, 240 watts now. This should be slightly above my FTP. You can see my heart rate has just passed 190, so I'm at lactate threshold. I can only sustain a few minutes above this level. 260 is where I started into the hard stuff. I'm still able to control my breathing, but my legs are definitely feeling a fatigue. My heart rate nearing max uh, jumped significantly since the last interval. 280, cadence is a little bit high, but still under control. I'm starting to push and pull on the pedals now to use different muscles in my legs. All right, 300 watts. I wanna stop, but it's time to dig deep and empty the tank. This is what gives the FTP test the reputation. In the ramp test, the effort jumps from easy to uncomfortable pretty fast, maybe within about two intervals. I'm about to hit the 320 watt interval and I'm far beyond uncomfortable. A lot of this part of the test is mental. I was telling myself I had to get into the 320 watt interval and then just keep turning those pedals for as long as I could. 
You can see my cadence has dropped now. I'm slowly winding down. It's so important remember not to stand up during this test or to start mashing the pedals at a very low RPM. I set a cadence limit of 60 RPM. So once I hit that level, I'm just gonna end the test. Going too low with the cadence at this kind of power can really injure your knees. And that's it, I'm definitely toast. My FTP estimate was pretty good. I ended up at 234 watts, which is one knot higher than six months ago. So I'm pretty happy with that result given my long break from training. At this point in the workout, it's asking me to pedal back up to 75 watts for a cool down. It's hard to work up the willpower to do the cool down and not just step off the bike at this point, honestly. So with my FTP number, I could do a few things. The first of which is gauge my cycling fitness and progress in training. Zwift will also be able to use this number in the workouts to automatically adjust the training intensity for maximum benefit without overtraining. Finally, you can use your FTP to better pace efforts. And this gets back to what FTP is, a measure of the maximum power you can sustain for 60 minutes. Of course, these FTP tests only estimate your FTP, but doing an actual one hour long test at that level would be extremely hard to pace and very hard to finish. But once you have your estimated FTP, you can use that to estimate the power levels you can hold for certain amounts of time. A Google search of cycling power training zones shows me that if I want to sustain a several hour long effort, I should aim for around 56 to 75% of my FTP power, or about 130 to 175 watts. And this number makes sense because I just rode the January Zwift Fondo, which took me about two and a quarter hours to complete at an average of 154 watts. Final thoughts on the Zwift ramp test are one, it is short and to the point as far as FTP test goes. Number two, consistency is important to both completing the test and for setting up the test with your indoor trainer. And number three, it's a good idea to supplement the ramp tests warm up with your own prior to starting the workout. Leave a comment below if you have any other questions or thoughts about ramp FTP tests. Look me on Zwift and let's go for a ride. My username is Michael Tabor and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.